I've recently noticed a few videos that confuse how power and dominance are developed. These videos say power and dominance are primarily built by standing tall, silencing people with simple gestures, pausing when you speak, and other basic actions. This is very misleading. These actions do increase your power, but only in small ways. They will rarely be the primary source of your power. Just look at guys like Elon Musk, who fail many of these so-called rules, yet wield immense amounts of influence. So what should you focus on to avoid being powerless? To answer this question, we will first discuss a study by two scientists called John French and Bertram Raven. Their goal was to classify the sources of social power. They originally hypothesized that there were five sources of power, but later added a sixth. This article helps us more clearly understand how humans create power. Then, we will look at Vito Corleone's transformation from vulnerable immigrant to powerful mob boss in the Godfather movies. He will help us see how French and Raven principles can be practically applied in our lives. By investing in the right things, anyone can eliminate powerlessness. The first source is called expert power. Expert power is the ability to influence people to act because of your superior skills or knowledge in an area. Expert power is held by doctors, lawyers, engineers, and others. So can you only hold expert power if you hold advanced degrees? In one of the earliest scenes, Vito's whole family is annihilated by a mob boss for not paying tribute. Here, Vito experiences true mob brutality. They will kill with no hesitation if you refuse to obey. Later in the movie, he makes it to America, where he comes across another man who appears to be the neighborhood bomb boss. But Vito notices a few incongruencies. He can negotiate with this man. People don't pay and are still alive. The man occasionally even threatens to use the police. These are all behaviors that are vastly different from the mob bosses of his childhood. However, the neighborhood and his friends are intimidated enough to continue paying tribute to this fake mob boss. Vito tells his friends to trust him, and he will handle the issue. Vito then assassinates the mob boss. This impressive behavior led his friends Tessio and Clemenza to decide to work for him. They were only willing to be subservient because Vito's of superior Vito's. expert power. Thus, we learn that Vito uses expert power that he was born with and he gained through experience. He was able to understand what others thought, why they acted a certain way, what their strengths and weaknesses were, and then he exploited them. So how can you build your expert power? A simple method for building expert power is to study people. Understanding what makes people tick is a skill that will follow you regardless of the path that you take in life. Where do they get their power from and where are they weak? Becoming an expert with people is a power investment that will always pay dividends. Another way to increase your expert power is to put yourself in the right type of situation at each step of your career. At the beginning of your career, try to work for people who are experts and are on the cutting edge of the field. This would be like working for Google or Facebook if you are a software engineer. This experience allows you to understand how the top 1% of engineers do things. Then, after a few years, when you've learned a majority of their tricks, you would take that experience and put yourself in a situation where you would be the expert. This could mean starting your own consulting for businesses or joining a smaller company as the in-house expert. Your past experience allows you to know the best way to do something, and your present situation as the only expert means that people will listen to your advice. Thus, you invest in power early by learning valuable skills from the best. Later, you position yourself in a situation where you are the only one with those abilities. The second source is called coercive power. Coercive power is the ability to influence behavior against the person's will based on punishment or the threat of punishment. Coercive power often takes the form of threats, shaming, firing people, or violence. So can you only use coercive power if you're sizable and intimidating? One day, when Vito comes home from work, his neighbor tosses him a bag of guns, presumably to avoid getting into trouble. Vito stores these weapons and later develops a relationship with this person. Together, the guns and this relationship form the backbone of the Corleone family's power. 
he uses the guns to rob competitors, protect allies, win wars, and make threats. It was because of these guns that he was able to assassinate the neighborhood mob boss. Interestingly, the Godfather movies are stories of an extremely violent family, despite most of them not being very physically intimidating. Vito doesn't start out as an imposing character, but he's able to come across resources that allow him to develop this source of power. Thus, his connection to people who have coercive power allows him to draw upon this power source. Remember, the way he killed the neighborhood mob boss is from a, with a gun given to him by a friend. Keep in mind that coercive power has to be more subtle nowadays because of the government's ability to enforce. While you won't likely get into fights as an adult, practicing fighting on a weekly basis in a boxing or jujitsu class will give you confidence to withstand typical levels of aggressive behavior and threats of violence. People will also express their aggression in the form of insults and social games. Improving your ability to shame others and have good comebacks will allow you to keep the respect of any group you are in if the situation requires. Pay attention to people's thumb screws so you can use them if you need to. If wit isn't a natural gift, watch celebrity roasts. Practice roasting people when you walk down the street inside your own head. The key to coercive power in this age is to ask yourself what you would do if someone doesn't act the way that you want. Then go and develop that coercive resource. The third source is called reward power. Reward power is the ability to influence behavior by giving or withholding rewards. Examples include gifts, treats, year-end bonuses, and more. How rich do you have to be to use reward power? Well, we see Vito partially use this power to help the old lady whose landlord was kicking her out of the house. He offers to pay the landlord multiple months ahead of time in exchange for the lady being able to stay in the neighborhood apartment. He also uses this power to pay people to guard his olive oil shipments, family, and other business interests. While he does end up rich, we see Vito giving simple gifts long before he is extremely wealthy. Reward power can be developed in two ways. Most obviously, reward power comes from having a well-paid job. If you aren't happy with the salary that you make, try a career in sales, engineering, nursing, or construction. In sales, you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars, and the same with engineers. You can work only a few days a week as a nurse and get paid more than 60% of the population. Even in construction, you can make almost $100,000 a year by working overtime in dangerous situations. These jobs will be difficult, but did you expect power to be easy to attain? They will allow you to build your financial assets, which will result in you having the ability to reward people for listening to you. Use the money to give meaningful gifts to your friends as rewards. Starting your own business will also massively increase your reward power. When you own the company, you decide what people are paid, what they get to do, and how they are treated. You can use this power to convince people to act the way that you see fit. If you're struggling to start a business, try working in a service-based business as an employee for a few years. This could be anything from lawn mowing to electrician work to ICE security consulting. After you've learned enough, quit and start selling your services on your own. I can't stress this enough, starting your own successful business is arguably the most effective way to legally build your power in our modern society. The fourth source is called information power. Information power is the ability to influence behavior because of limited information that others want. One example of information power is knowing what your coworkers make. So do you have to be in a leadership position to develop this type of power? Most of the information power that Vito has is developed behind the scenes. And we do see one instance of the method that Vito uses to develop information power. At the wedding, Vito meets with a large man named Luca Brazzi. He asks Luca to spy for him within the other families. Luca is then to relay the information about where they are going and what they are doing back to the Godfather. While Luca is found out and murdered, we can easily assume that this isn't the first time that Vito has sent a spy to gather information power. You don't need to be in a leadership position to obtain and use information power. One way is to be aware of the common prices in the area that you do business. 
This includes things like salaries and going rates for purchasing things. This knowledge will allow you to negotiate more successfully and increase your power. Another way to gain information power is to make guess statements. Guess statements are statements that you think are false. However, you still make the statement just to see how the other person reacts. For example, say to your boss, it's too bad we aren't getting a Christmas bonus this year in hopes that your boss will correct you or make a funny face. Fishing for information in this way works best when you watch people's expressions and body language closely and first lower their guards. The fifth source is called referent power. Referent power is the ability to influence behavior because of a feeling of liking or affiliation. We see referent power in successful celebrities and politicians because they convince their followers to identify with their image or their mission. You've probably guessed that you don't have to be a popular influencer to grow your referent power. Referent power is developed by embodying and expressing the values of the group. We see the signs of Vito's referent power at the beginning of the first movie. We see many people gathered to celebrate one of Vito's children's weddings. This is evidence of how much people like and feel affiliated with him. Vito cultivated this power because he has constantly embodied his culture's values. One value he sees the notion of taking care of kin and family. He always helps people he considers family and avoids hurting who he considers his ethnic kin. You can cultivate referent power with two primary methods. First, learn to build rapport with people. Rapport is built by making the person feel understood and valued. There are many techniques for building rapport, but you'll have to check out our How to Build Rapport in 5 Minutes with Anyone video for more detail. The second method for increasing your referent power is to work on embodying characteristic that your society values. For some social groups, this is strength. For others, this is intelligence or wit. Pay attention to the common features that the popular people have in your social group, then develop those traits. Speaking of social signals, if you're enjoying this video, pound that like button. Now, on to the final source. The sixth source is called legitimate power. Legitimate power is the ability to influence behavior because of a moral or social norm. Technically, legitimate power is broken down into power that comes from position, like a job, reciprocity, like gifts, equity, like social desire, or dependence, like a state of needing something. Legitimate power is another main source of power for Vito. In fact, one of the business deals that forms the center plot for the movie is built around the fact that Vito has many connections with influential politicians, lawyers, and policemen. He built this power by investing in people before they became powerful. For example, Vito might pay for law school for a neighborhood boy. That boy would grow up and eventually move into politics. Then, if a law was about to be passed, Vito would simply remind him of the gift that was given long ago, and the bill would be handled. The key here is to do favors for ambitious people who show potential long before they become successful. If you help people who are currently successful, they'll think it's part of the deal, or worse, they might think that they just deserve it because of who they are. However, if you give an insignificant person a big break, they likely won't forget. Be willing to introduce young and up-and-comers to your network and be willing to give them guidance and insight. This is a long-term investment and will help you reap the long-term rewards of a human being's need to be reciprocal. We mentioned that Vito seemed to draw his power from coercive, referent, and legitimate forms of power by willing to be violent, give and repay favors, and use money. So what will you focus on? If you are currently powerless, it is because you have made poor power investments in the past. You are likely focused on improving the smaller things at the exclusion of major sources of power like career or network. Would you like us to detail how Michael rises to power? He made impressive moves in the first and second movie, but he also made at least one big mistake. Let us know in the comments and subscribe if you want to catch that episode when we release it. Stay tuned for more practical tactics for increasing your personal power.